Okay, hello everybody. Um, welcome to the Viva Mondo webinar. Today we are joined by Study in Sweden um, with Hannah Maxwell and the lovely Douglas and of course guest, uh, guest um, Daniel in the background too. Um, I just want to take you through a little bit about Viva Mondo and what we do as a, a company. Uh, so we essentially exist to help students, you know, onto the next part of their lives. So information, details required for studying abroad, uh, destinations, degrees, application details, all of the information can be found on our website um, and sending you on to the next way on your life in university. Um, now, I just want to take you through Zoom just a little bit. Um, if you could, please answer all the questions in the Q&A box at the bottom and not in the chat. Um, that would be amazing. And we will get to those questions right at the end of the presentation. Um, we're also streaming on our Facebook on the Salau du Estudente channel, um, where you can also register there. Um, if you do want to send any more questions to the panelists or anything, you can register there, which is absolutely great. Um, I'm going to hand the floor over to you guys now in, in Sweden. Um, yeah, go for it. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you very much, Steph. Um, so yes, as mentioned, my name is Hannah Maxwell and I work for the Swedish Institute with Study in Sweden. And as a former international student here in Sweden, I'm really happy to talk to you today. And this is my colleague, Doug. Um, he's going to be starting off the presentation now. Um, but Doug, you were also an international student, weren't you? That's right, yeah, I was an international student um, a while ago now, um, but this is definitely one of the best part of my jobs is being able to, to speak to prospective students and to kind of reminisce on what it was like to be an international student. Um, this is the first time we've done the Zoom webinar, which is really cool, I think. Um, so hello to everyone um, joining us for the webinar and also joining us on Facebook Live as well. Um, so I'm gonna kick things off here um, and I'm gonna give you guys a little introduction to Sweden and to higher education in Sweden. Um, and um, well, actually, I'm mostly going to talk about Sweden and you're going to talk about higher education. So I'll go through a bit more about how to apply, when to apply, and um, also talk about tuition fees and scholarships as well, because I know these are very important questions too. Um, and then after I'm done, I'll be passing over to Daniel, um, who is a current student here in Sweden. And he'll be talking a little bit about what it's like to live and study here. Um, and then after that, we'll be going over to a Q&A session as well. So if you have any questions during this up or our presentations, feel free to write them and we will answer them right at the end. Yep, definitely. I think you're the, the star of the day, Daniel. I'm sure the students are looking forward to <laughs> hearing you what you have to say there. And we'll see if we get any unexpected surprises with students popping in as well, because you're on campus doing this. So. Yes, uh, yeah. that actually might happen. This is actually on school. I'm here in Malmo University. So, well, let's hope everything goes well. We will see. <laughs> Very authentic. Yeah. So um, let's kick things off here. Um, just a really short introduction um, for you guys who know nothing about the country of Sweden. So um, I'm just going to give some basic details about the country of Sweden. Um, so you have kind of some foundation basis um, before diving into higher education in Sweden. So uh, the first thing we always like to, to start with is that um, Sweden is a different country than Switzerland. Um, I don't blame you if you guys get it mixed up. I, I think I, I'm originally from the US and I think I lived here for like 10 years before my uncle actually understood I was in Sweden and not Switzerland. Um, so we are not the red and white flag there. We are the the blue and yellow flag up in the corner. Um, it's, I understand if you mess it up, uh, Sweden and Switzerland. Daniel, how do you say um, Sweden and then Switzerland in Spanish? Okay, it's kind of tricky because in Spanish it's, I mean, it's Suecia, Sweden, yeah. and Suiza. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's so, super close. <laughs> That's very yeah. new. That's like the closest I've ever heard. Okay. I mean, yeah, the, the names sound the same. We're both uh, known for being among the most innovative countries in the world. We're very modern, um, very wealthy. We have a lot of similarities, but there are some differences as well. Um, and so we're going to share some of them. So um, Sweden is actually a large country geographically. We don't have a lot of people. 
we, the entire population of Sweden is 10 million. And I'm sure we have lots of people listening to today who live in cities that have populations that are 10 million or close to 10 million. Um, we're the third largest country geographically in Western Europe and the fifth largest in Europe geographically. So the combination of 10 million people in a pretty big country means there's lots of space. So um, just the tempo of everyday life is a little slower, a little more relaxed. Even in Stockholm, which is the capital of Sweden and the most populated city with 2 million people, and you see a picture of Stockholm on the screen there, um, you're gonna get lots of open spaces. There's water all over in, in Sweden. I think we have one, one lake for every 50 people or something like that. So um, lots of water, lots of open spaces and um, a bit more relaxed uh, tempo in the day-to-day -day life. The, Stockholm is the largest city, as I said, two million people. Uh, Gothenburg and the surrounding area is the second largest city with one million, and Malmo is the third largest city with 650,000. Um, and then it gets smaller and smaller um, after that. So th um, I think, uh, Daniel, are you, I forget, are you from Bogota? No, I'm from Medellin. Medellin, okay, and what's the population? It's, uh, I think it's over maybe one or two million, I would say. Okay. So yeah. not, not a huge, not a huge culture shock, at least with the number of people, I suppose. Yeah, it's small. Uh, but some other differences probably as well, which we'll get into. Uh, so um, what else should you guys know about Sweden? Um, well, I think we're certainly known for um, a lot of our multinational corporations and our brands. Um, Maybe you don't know, but all of these companies that are popping up on the screen have their orange, uh, origins in Sweden. So Skype, Spotify, Volvo, IKEA. Um, maybe not all these companies are still 100% Swedish, but they were started here. I don't know if we have any gamers listening, but Mojang Studios has made Minecraft, the most popular PC game of all time. There's um, a huge number of startups coming from Sweden and from Stockholm. Stockholm ranks just behind Silicon Valley for um, having the, I guess, the most robust startup scene in the entire world. So what's, what's really interesting, if you look at these, you know, these companies, of course, every, every country has lots of innovation and brands they're known for, but what's pretty unique about Sweden is, I mean, keep in mind the population is 10 million. And basically all these companies see you on the screen are the industry leader or among the industry leader in their fields. And that's, that's pretty unique when you consider the size of the country. Um, if I compare it to where I'm from in the US, we'd be completely blown away by Sweden. So I think there's something special going on in, in the country to create this really innovative uh, mindset here. Um, and so, so what is kind of, you know, creating all this, um, this innovation in Sweden? And I should also say that, I mean, we have um, not just a lot of companies we're known for, but um, we have the second highest number of top ranked universities in the world on a per capita basis. Um, so we're known for a lot of things. And I think one of the main reasons for this is um, the Swedish education system is really good at helping people to think creatively and to come up with their ideas. And um, what's one of the reasons or reasons for this? Um, I think one of the reasons is the, these different words you see on the screen here. So informality, independence, and influence. And, and what we mean by these things are, so in terms of informality um, and a relaxed atmosphere, what, what we mean is that you're always gonna be on a first name basis with your professor. This, informality, which is like a really core part of the Swedish culture and lifestyle um, and society. And it's reflected in the, the classrooms as well. It means you guys can ask questions. You're expected to ask questions. It's okay to question your professor and not agree with her or him. And it makes for, I think, a really nice learning atmosphere. Um, Sweden in general is a very non-hierarchical country as well. And that's reflected in the classrooms. Um, in return, in, sorry, in regards to independence, um, there's also a huge amount of responsibility placed on students. You're expected to work independently um, and to think independently. You still have to read your 
textbooks, but in, um, I think this is one of like the biggest shifts for international students coming here is that you might come from a system where you just read a textbook, you memorize it, and then you recite that, and then you get an A on all your exams. Um, that's not really the way Swedish ed education works. You still have to read the textbooks, but then you have to combine your real world experience, your previous working experience, what other people have um, told you, your own ideas, um, and kind of challenge what's in the textbook. And this is hard, and it's, I think, a challenge, but it's so critical to be successful uh, in the global job market. And the, because this is also the way things work when you get a job. You can no longer just open a textbook and find out the answer. You have to think for yourself. So this is a really useful trait for you guys to, to learn. Um, influence is also a key aspect of Swedish higher education, um, where students' voices are heard. Student unions, for example, are a key part of um, Swedish universities. And um, I think this really empowers students and, and makes you more interested in your, in your education as well. Uh, what are some other things international students tend to like about Sweden? Uh, there's a huge focus on equality in Sweden, uh, gender equality as well, but many other aspects of equality. And we're not perfect, um, but I think we've come a really long ways. If I compare Sweden to the US, um, I can see just you know, a huge difference here. We, I think it's almost equal number of parliament members are, are women compared to men. Um, I mean, the Nordic countries in general are, are, are great at this, but um, I think this equality aspect is something that can be really, really nice for a lot of students, especially for a lot of um, women who are considering studying abroad as well. Um, I, I think in my, I was thinking about this recently. In my working career, I've had, I think, like seven bosses and only one of them was a man. So, yeah. um, that something. it's not something. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. Um, Sweden's a very clean country as well. Um, we have clean air, we have clean water, um, we have clean cities, and there's a huge focus on sustainability. Um, Things like waste management is just like a huge part of day-to-day -day life. We are so efficient in recycling household waste. We recycle 99% of it. We're even asking our neighbors in Norway to send um, their waste. So um, that's, I think, really, really key thing just to keep in mind for the world moving forward. But it's really nice to have that focus. Um, Sweden's a very safe country in terms of violent crime. Um, Again, you know, we're, we're not perfect, but you can be safe in the cities at nighttime. You, I think, don't have, you probably are the person to ask about this, but I don't think you have to think about safety on a day-to-day -day basis, um, like you might in, in some other places in, in the world. Um, Sweden's very organized as well. Things run on time. Lifestyle in general here is just like very convenient and well-structured. Um, and it's a very easy, easy place to live, I think, as well. And then um, cold, and you're like, Daniel, you probably saw this, and you're like, that is not a nice thing at all about <laughs> Sweden. And I'm sure the students listening today are thinking the same thing, like, no, not a chance. Um, but there are some nice aspects as well. Sweden's cold, but it's not as cold as you think. Um, and that's because most people live in the south of Sweden. So Stockholm is one third of the way up the country, and 90% of the population lives around Stockholm or further south. The average temperature during winter is uh, one degree Celsius. So we, we do get snow and some places we get a lot of snow and ice. Um, but when you're indoors in Sweden, you're never cold. Um, the houses, buildings are built really well. So you never freeze inside. Um, the darkness, on the other hand, is maybe a separate issue. But um, I'll let you maybe talk about the, the darkness, potentially, Daniel, later on. Um, yes. But uh, those are some of the things we wanted to, to highlight without taking up too much time. And I'm going to pass on to Hannah to give you guys a, a rundown of what we can offer you as an international student. Exactly. Thank you, Doug, for that brilliant um, summary of what it's like to live here in Sweden. Um, also about the higher education. I think it's really important um, information for you guys if you wanted to come and study here. But I'm going to move on to talk about what kind of programs we have. And first of all, you will find that there are over a thousand programs in Sweden that are taught in English. And this is a large number of programs. Um, so you can, uh, you can find 
almost all subjects um, taught here in Sweden in English, apart from say dentistry or medicine, veterinary science or uh, teaching. Um, and this is because these subjects have to be taught in Swedish. Uh, this is the Swedish law. But I would say that you can find pretty much any other subject taught in English here in Sweden. At the bachelor's level, there are slightly fewer programs um, in English. There are roughly 100 right now, but every year there's a few more. So you never know, there might be a lot more in the future um, taught in English. But if you're interested in the master level, here is where you get a large uh, selection of programs to study. There are over 900 programs taught entirely in English. Um, and at the bachelor level, the, the duration of the programs is three years in total. But at the master level, there are um, the duration of the programs can vary a little bit depending on the program. You can either have a one year program or a two year program. Um, but because there's so many programs here, um, it's, there's a very high likelihood that you'll find a program that will match your interests and career development goals as well. But then I think maybe the most important question, how do you apply? And the great new news is that the application is open right now. And it's a fairly easy application procedure. You apply on one uh, national portal, which you can see here. It is universityadmissions.se. And as I mentioned, the application is open right now. But the deadline is fast approaching. Um, the 15th of January um, 2020 is when you need to apply online by. And when you apply on this uh, university admissions website, you'll pay one fee for, for all of your applications basically to Sweden. And at the bachelor level, you can apply up to eight bachelor programs for the one uh, application fee. If you're applying to master studies, you will be able to apply to up to four programs. Um, again, only one application fee. And those can be at different universities, exactly. same university, a mix, whatever. But the deadline is fast approaching. So you guys need to find the programs and universities you want to apply to soon. Exactly. So you're not doing it last minute because we like deadlines in yeah. Sweden as well. And you're going to have to keep that deadline. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So just to summarize, um, there's one application portal for and one application fee for either eight bachelor's programs, four master programs, and the application deadline is approaching. Then fees. Um, here in Sweden, there are tuition fees for non-EU or EEA citizens. And this this varies depending on the program, but roughly it's between 9,000 US dollars to 140,000 US, uh, 15,000 US dollars per academic year. Um, it depends also on the program subject. So things like architecture, design, they are more at the higher, the higher cost. Um, whereas some say hum some humanities subjects are slightly cheaper than others, but if you find a program that you're interested in, this information will be clearly stated on that web page. And then if you do have an EU or EEA citizenship, you actually don't have to pay tuition fees in Sweden. And this means that you don't have to pay an application fee either. So that's quite good to know. Um, so again, I think a good segue from tuition fee is to now talk about scholarships. Um, because I know this is something we get a lot of questions from um, and we there are a couple of different options for you if you want to if you're needing a scholarship to study here in Sweden. The first one is scholarships from the individual universities and we're not going to go into any detail um, because the scholarships offered it depends on the university. Some of them offer a scholarship that covers the entirety of the tuition fee whereas other universities offer scholarships that, um, that cover half of it or 25%. So I think it's really important to go into the university websites themselves and see what scholarship opportunities there are. But Doug and I work for the Swedish Institute and our organization actually offers a number of scholarships. And these are the Swedish Institute Study Scholarships. And these are offered for master students only. And basically, I've had a look 
a double checked our scholarships right now and we have one called the Swedish Institute for Global Professionals and to be eligible for this scholarship from South America you, you need to be a citizen of Brazil, Colombia, Guatemala, Bolivia, Peru and Ecuador to be eligible. Ooh. Can you repeat that? Yes, it is Brazil, Colombia, Guatemala, Bolivia, Peru or Ecuador to Perfect. apply. Yeah. Yeah. So there are a few other, you have to meet a few other requirements for this scholarship, but the, the main one to mention right now is that you have to be uh, a citizen of these countries to apply. Um, but I'd recommend that you go and have a look at our website uh, listed here to see the available scholarships. And the application process is coming up quite soon as well. Um, in the beginning of February, so from the 10th to the 20th of February is the application um, deadlines for the Swedish Institute scholarships. And these scholarships, they are quite competitive because they cover both living expenses and tuition fees. So they do get quite a lot of applications every year, um, but definitely we have quite a lot of scholarships available. So recommend to apply. Yeah, like around 400, yep. maybe a bit more each year. Exactly. Um, and I, Danielle, you have a university scholarship as well, I think. So there's, as Hannah said, um, Swedish universities do have their own scholarships and that's certainly an option as well. Yeah. Exactly. And now I'll go on to talk a little bit about cost of living. Um, you may have heard a little bit about Sweden being quite expensive. And whilst this is true, I definitely would say that it's possible to get by on a student budget. Um, I think your budget depends very much on your expectations, your lifestyle, and it, obviously which city you live in. There are some cities in Sweden which are it's more, exp more expensive to live in than others. Um, but yeah, there's definitely ways of keeping your costs down as a student. There's like, um, shopping in stores like H&M or Ikea, the cost of you, the, the prices are slightly cheaper than other places. Also, I'd say that eating out is rather expensive here in Sweden. So knowing how to cook is a good, a good thing to do before coming here. Yeah, I mean, even our colleagues basically bring their lunch to work. Most of our colleagues lunch every lunch. day, they bring their lunch box and probably as well at your school, Daniel, I bet you guys have like a a ton of microwaves and you bring your lunch and everyone eats them up? Uh, yes, that tends to happen, but I'm really bad at cooking, so that's a problem. Oh so, talk about that later, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, Brilliant, yeah. So I guess, as Daniel said, you can talk a little bit more about um, living as a student in Sweden. Um, but a good thing to, or it's quite important to, uh, to talk about, is that when you apply, for a resident permit for studies um, in Sweden, you will have to show that you have sufficient finances um, to cover the entirety of your studies here in Sweden. So you'll have to show that you have roughly around 900 US dollars per month for 10 out of the 12 months when you apply for a residence permit. And I think that's pretty much all for me. Um, briefly before we go on, uh, to Daniel's presentations. There is a wealth of information on our website and it's www.studyinsweden.se and here you can find out a little bit more about the different universities here in Sweden. You can go through all the different programs, then you can also go through um, our website to our Digital Ambassadors blogs where they, they write a lot about what it's like to live and study here in Sweden. Or vlogs, yes. and Danielle is one of our digital ambassadors, and he has amazing videos for you guys to check out. Yeah, as, as well as some Christmas ones, which are that's coming up. Yeah. <clears throat> and then finally, here we have a few important links. So back here, you can see the information to our website, the application portal, the student blogs as well, and then our Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube channels. Also, our contact details. So if you have any more questions, you're welcome to contact either Douglas or Daniel as well. Great. Yeah, but let's pass on to Dan. Thanks for waiting, Daniel. No problem.
yeah. Not so many visitors yet. It seems like maybe a few. Year, so it's it's nice. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, we're just gonna get the um, uh, presentation here set up for you in just a second, um, and uh, then we'll we'll hand over to you in just a second here. Cool. Uh, nice. Go ahead, Daniel. Okay, uh, so hello everyone. Uh, I'm Daniel. I'm a digital ambassador uh, working with these two guys over here. So uh, what we do is that we try to just help people with the process of getting to know Sweden and just giving you information about everything that you need to know about just not only how to apply and how to do all the process, but actually how is it like to live here because this is going to be uh, well, if you go for a master's, it's about two years of your life that you will be here, and it's quite a change, and it was a big change for me. So uh, what I wanted to tell you is just a, a little ease about myself, about why I chose to come here. So um, if we go back one slide. Can we... Okay, so I'll just talk about, a little bit about it. So. Uh, a, a little bit about me. So I'm from Colombia and there I studied music, marketing, graphic design. I kind of tried to, to study different things, but even with that, I was able to work and I was working for seven years in marketing with different international companies. So one of the things that that helped me is that that gave me just a, a, a little bit of a taste of what is it like to deal with different cultures, with uh, different environments and for me I thought it was amazing everything that I learned because it really makes you think in a different way just trying to solve problems in a different context so uh, I said like okay I've been working for quite some time like uh, I want to expand what I do and I want to do it in an international environment I want to learn from others I want to learn from the context what I'm in as well so uh, I wanted to do that so that's when I decided I want to go abroad to study. Then uh, for me, it was a clear choice. So when we go to why Sweden, which is next, thank you. So uh, here uh, I was like looking around, but for me, Sweden was my number one option. And it is because a lot of different things, but I wanna just summarize it into three things that I think that for me is what make me choose just to quit my job, leave everything, and just come here to, to have this experience. This, for me, has been a life-changing experience. So let's go to those. So uh, the reasons are, number one is the city. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about that, because I was thinking, I, I want to be in a place where I can actually live, because I will be studying there, but I will be living in this place for such a long time. So. For me, it was really important to be in a place that it was accessible for me. And by that, I mean, part of it is the language. And probably a lot of people ask me this, is, do I need to learn Swedish? No, you don't need to learn Swedish. Here, everyone speaks English. You can get around just fine. Even when I try to speak Swedish, uh, everyone replies to me in English. I mean, my Swedish is really bad, so they can tell that it's not my strong suit, so they just switch to English just because of me. And it's something that it's in the culture, like everywhere I'm at, everyone can be speaking in, in Swedish. And when, I'm, when I come in, they realize they don't speak Swedish, they just switch to English. And it's like 10 people and me, and all of them are just doing this compromise just because of me. And it's something amazing. And with the city, uh, I wanna tell you a little bit about also what I like about, uh, Swedish cities usually they are they tend to be very international in general because uh, there are smaller ones but still you see a lot of international people it's so it's a thing about uh, in Europe as well but in Sweden in particular you see that a lot because there are people coming from all over the world and I and I love that and that was one of my biggest expectations so that was why I chose that I wanted to be in Sweden the, just the infrastructure how organized everything is it's amazing, just walking out of the street, it's just unbelievable sometimes. It's coming from, from uh, Colombia, it's such a, an amazing change, just the bus, transportation system, trains, everything. It, it's, you can access everything with just one card and it's really organized on time. So 
Uh, I really like that. I really like how it's like to live here, even though it gets a little bit cold. But actually, the cold is not an issue for me. That's what we were talking about before. Uh, my, my real issue is with the darkness. And just be ready because it's it's gonna just it's mind blowing how, how much this affects your life because sometimes you get like just a couple hours of of daylight and it's night time at 4 p.m. and you're just like feeling sleepy so it's hard to get around that I mean living all your life in a place that you get exactly 12 hours of of sunlight and 12 hours of, of night and but still everything compensates all the other things is just an, an amazing experience so that's for me the city the next thing uh that i really really liked that made me chose why i chose Sweden is uh well so, sorry i wanted to show you this photo this photo where i'm living this is malmo uh it's an amazing city by the coast and it has the tallest building in all the nordic countries actually i thought that it was the tallest in sweden but it's the tallest in all of Scandinavia. And it's that one that you're seeing in there. So, yep, it's a pretty nice place to live. <laughs> so the next thing for me was the university. So the university is really important. And in the next slide, you can see the, the university where, where I'm studying. It's also a beautiful place by the coast. Uh, you can see the lighthouse. It's just great to just go out and just see the water. Uh, I come from a, a valley, so we never saw, I mean, just mountains and here you see water everywhere nature is such an important thing uh, well it's really important for me and it's uh, quite a feature here in Sweden like if you like nature here it's amazing because in any city that where you're at just half an hour away you will see the most amazing landscapes and it's just a beautiful place to hike and just go out but talk about, talking about the university for me it was really nice how the Swedish culture with the universities, they really encourage students to, to try out things and just to even challenge professors. Like this is the first time in my life that I don't have to address a professor by just professor, uh, professor and last name. And they, once I, in my first class, someone tried to correct the professor and I was like, whoa, this is gonna go bad. But no, <laughs> like, thank you, thank you, I didn't know that. He actually accepted he didn't know something. Like, for me, it was just mind blowing for so many different reasons. So, uh, and that's the culture. The culture is, is a really horizontal culture in which no one is above anyone else. And, and it's something that it's really refreshing. And that also means that, that they really appreciate students. Like, I'm part of the, um, I'm the representative for my uh, master's program and I attend the faculty meetings. I just came out of one, that's why I'm here. And they were just uh, asking me and the other representatives, uh, how do you wanna change the program? And they were just taking notes about everything that we said, like our ideas were being heard. They were taking notes just as, I mean, a professor taking notes of what I say, that, that, that's insane. So uh, for me, just the culture in the universities was amazing. And the next thing why I chose Sweden uh, is the people. And I mean, it's part of the experience. I mean, when you go abroad and you don't know anyone in the whole country, I mean, in the whole continent for me, I, yeah, I came here not knowing anyone. And just being, being in a, uh, a student residence, meeting the people. And one thing I knew is that uh, my program had just this, uh, kind of reputation of being very international. And when I came here, it was just like that. Out of, uh, we were 14 students in my program and it was only three, no, four Swedish students. So 10 international students, each one from a different country. Like there were not two from the same country. This was great. So we had 11 nationalities in, in the classroom which makes it amazing because I, I came here not to learn just from the, uh, from the school, from the, but from the other people who come here who are professionals and have uh, an, an amazing track record of what they've been doing in their lives. So for me, that was just one of the best things. And I keep learning every single day from them. So uh, these are some of my classmates. You can see them in there. So I can tell you that there, I have uh, on the corner, uh, that's Leonard, he, he's from Germany. Then we have 
someone from China, from uh, Denmark, from Iran. And yeah, it really makes it something totally new. And I've been working for a long time and just being here, studying with them, I've learned so much more just from being, being able to see things from different points of view, from different cultures. So uh, those were my main reasons to, to pick Sweden. And the last bonus thing is something that I've just been doing here and why I, I still think that this is the best decision I've made in my life. In the next slide, you see a little bit of what I've, I've been doing. I've been developing apps. Uh, I'm doing, uh, that's uh, one of my uh, projects. It's a game design. I'm designing a virtual, like, uh, well, augmented reality uh, golf thing that you can play everywhere. And when I just pitched that to my professor saying that I wanted to create an augmented reality game, and they just said, well, yeah, go ahead and do it. And they support all of the crazy projects and ideas that you have, and they just give you they just assign the right supervisor so you can just have all the support from the university so you can just follow any crazy dreams that you have and everyone i talk to they can say oh, the same thing like the university is really support you in in just finding your way and they are have this mentality of entrepreneurship of just go out and create your own things so that's something i really like i've been here for one year and I'm loving the, the system, the people, the city, everything else. Even though uh, from my experience, I can tell you that learning how to cook before coming here would have been very useful. I'm, <laughs> I live on a diet of sandwiches and cereal, <laughs> other things. But, but that was my diet for quite some time. So uh, just heads up because it gets very expensive if you try to eat outside. But on the bright side is that we get a lot of student discounts. We have oh, students okay. on the, some restaurants around here. Uh, we have student discounts for big stores. Like here, there's a big store that's called uh, Class Olson, if you know about it. And that one, we get student discount. We get the discount for uh, transportation. I get like, I don't know, like 20% off getting my, my monthly ticket because I buy like a monthly ticket for everything. So. I buy this ticket for, and for the whole month, I have full access to buses, to the to trains in the city. And if there are ferries or something that you need to take, it's included. So, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's expensive in general, but uh, if you don't party every single day and if you just make use of the student discounts on different things and you cook at home again, think about that uh, it, life is not gonna be that expensive so uh, you learn to manage after a while and that why I chose Sweden hopefully that's gonna give you uh, a few ideas of why you should cho choose Sweden as well and if you have any questions just let me know you have my email in there and right now if you want to ask anything just write it in the Q&A so that's it thank you so much Daniel yeah no, such a good presentation again. Yeah. Can I just ask quickly, you talked a little bit about the darkness. What are your tips for surviving the winter darkness? Okay, so I would just... Putting you on the spot here, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, so um, one of the things I would suggest, even though it's hard sometimes, is just getting out of the house. Try to go get out every single day. Uh, there are other things that make it nice as well. Uh, some friends use candles a lot. But uh, my main problem is that I get tired <laughs> because suddenly it's, it feels like it's midnight, but it's only 5 p.m. Yeah. And yeah. so another thing that, that I, I've been doing is uh, taking vitamins. That's a, a recommendation from a lot of people here. A lot of the locals told me just take vitamin D um, because yeah it gets pretty dark and even during the day there's it's kind of foggy and cloudy so yeah i mean i, don't like Malmö, I mean you guys <clears throat> for those of you who don't know much about malmo it's the, like the southernmost point of sweden and almost and you guys don't get as much snow um during the winters usually mm -hmm. compared to the rest of the country yes uh, so I've only been here for 
one winter, but it only snowed twice. But the thing is that it doesn't get that cold in here. Like I, I was really prepared to, I mean, I was just thinking that this was going to be like being in Antarctic, Antarctica, like <laughs> being, just being strong, uh, over pushing snow to the bus. To, to get to the school. But actually it only snowed twice and the coldest it got in here last year was minus four. And oh right, really? That was the coldest? Yeah. Wow. And that's the coldest. That was the coldest day. And right now we are, it's like four degrees and it's December. So it's really okay. Like I, I know people that I'm talking with like day to day who live in other countries, like even in the U.S., and they have to bear like minus 20 degrees and yeah. just yeah i mean you could talk about that because i think it's not that bad like sometimes i think right. i mean yeah they are just struggling so much and for me it's like i can just go out with just a jacket and i'm fine yeah i don't think even in stockholm we would really ever get minus 20 either like a, a few days um yeah, I I used to play ice hockey, and the one ice hockey game in my life I played outdoors, it was minus twenty degrees, and it was <laughs> it was too cold. But yeah, we usually don't get. I mean, I really like the when we get the actual cold winters because like yesterday we had snow here in Stockholm, and we you know snow everywhere, and it's so much lighter because then the lights you know bounce off the snow and everything's white and light and it. Yeah. it adds a different dimension and then you can get do like you know winter sports whether it's nordic skating or cross-country skiing or you know whatever you like to do and then the the snow can be really nice i think I sometimes yeah. Yeah. and I'm, yeah. I'm actually originally from the uk and i actually am during the winter i'm actually warmer in sweden because in the mm. uk it's it's cold and it's windy and it's this kind of rainy all the time almost and it's it feels colder than it actually is but in sweden it's this kind of dry coldness during the winter really um and you're probably always warm inside exactly. here and maybe Definitely. not always in, <laughs> not <laughs> in always the uk, in the UK. Yeah. yeah um yeah so um but we want to get over to some questions um as daniel said type in your questions we'll answer them um, Charlie, maybe before we, um, I think we, uh, cool, you got some great questions. Um, before I get to the questions, we just want to briefly show you guys our website, maybe? Yeah. And just a few other good um, sites for you guys to know, um, so you know how to navigate them. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we'll start off with our website, um, studyinsweden.se, as Hannah said. Um, this is a uh, where you can find everything you guys need to know about studying in Sweden. Um, we have a if you guys have never visited our website, we have a program database where you can find uh, every program offered in English in the entire country of Sweden. So it's really easy to uh, just search exactly what you want, and you can find a university that probably offers that. Uh, there's lots of other information on our website as well. Everything from like how to apply to scholarships. Um, and if you guys want to read more about the scholarships that Hannah mentioned, um, you guys can do that on our um, our website. We actually have, it's our colleagues here at, at our office who have those scholarships. So if you click on scholarships, you guys can kind of filter by, um, if we scroll down a bit, um, yeah, um, so there you can see university scholarships and Swedish Institute scholarships. So let's go to the U Swedish Institute scholarships. And here you guys can filter by country or by citizenship to see what scholarships we have for you guys. And then you can read more about the specific requirements as well. And Hannah, can you repeat the countries again that are eligible for the Swedish Institute scholarships for global professionals? Yes, they are Brazil, Colombia. Guatemala, Bolivia, Peru, and Ecuador. Yep. And then we, there's many other countries outside of um, Latin America as well. And um, sorry, I'm going to go back here. Uh, here is when you guys do click on that link, you'll come to this page, which you can see all the countries that are eligible and learn more about those requirements. Just keep in mind, this is a separate process 
First, you have to apply to a program in Sweden by the 15th of January. Don't miss that deadline. Um, and then you have to apply for scholarships separately afterwards. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is, sorry, I'm clicking around here um, quite a bit. On our website, um, when you guys, if you do decide you want to apply, the national application portal is a different site. This is universityadmissions.se. You don't need to write down this URL right now um, because you can easily uh, navigate there from our website. Um, and this is where you pay the application fee. You guys can choose up to four master's programs to apply to. Then the only other thing I wanna show before the Q&A is on our website, if you guys go to, um, for example, here, Why Sweden? Um, you guys can click on our student blogs, which you can also find if you scroll down our, on our website as well. Um, and this is where you can read more about Daniel and our other um, student ambassadors. And they write super good tips and advice on what it's actually, basically the same information Daniel was just telling you guys right now. Um, all sorts of different information. And you can find different ambassadors from different, here's Daniel, um, different ambassadors from different countries. We have um, one more from Latin America, Camilo, um, who's from Bolivia, and he's studying at University of Gothenburg Global Studies. But we have ambassadors studying all sorts of different subjects. If you guys want to um, email them, you can do so, or just read um, their blog posts. You guys can do that as well. Um, Daniel is, has made some fantastic videos for our YouTube, and we'll share that link with you guys as well um, before we wrap up for the day. Um, because our ambassadors also create videos as well and run our Instagram if you guys want to check out our Instagram. But let's go over to the Q&A session yeah. and see what you guys want to know here. Yeah, so first of all, Doug, I'm going to ask you some questions now. Sure. Would you <clears throat> consider the environment there safe and friendly for LGBT groups? Yeah, so um, for anyone who's, uh, we talked a little bit about equality earlier. Sweden's a very, I think, open country. We know, we've talked to a lot of students and um, we know we actually get a lot of students that specifically come to Sweden um, who are LGBTQIA students and they feel that they can be themselves here freely and be open about it. And I think that's one of the wonderful aspects of Swedish society is that people can Sweden is super inclusive and you can be yourself. And so I would say absolutely the environment here is extremely safe and friendly towards LGBTQIA groups. Um, and I mean, um, this is an area I think where we're gonna be getting more and more content um, about this aspect of Swedish life, but we do get a, a lot of students from many countries that that's the reason um, they come here. And I think it's really, really powerful to hear that. So I think if, for yeah, for, for the person who asked that and for all other students ask, who identify as LGBTQIA, um, Sweden's I think a wonderful place to live and study, absolutely, yeah. Great, thank you. I think that was a really great answer mm -hmm. to that question. Um, the next question I'm gonna say right now is in Spanish and unfortunately, uh, I can, can, can you, you, can the you question, see the question? Kind of? Yeah, of course. Uh, oh, wonderful. Yay. We'll, we'll give that question over to Daniel. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll take that one. Uh, so the question is, uh, hello, is it, is it mandatory to, to, to speak English? Yes, I would say so, because the programs are uh, taught in English. So uh, you absolutely need to prove your English uh, proficiency. And that goes towards the next question as well. So. Um, do you want to talk about that? Yeah. yeah, so the next question is, uh, do students need to have any proficiency in Swedish as a requirement for admissions? Um, Hannah and Danielle. Yeah, so first of all, no. If you're applying for an English taught bachelor's or master's program here in Sweden, you do not need to know any Swedish, not to apply, certainly. Um, then one of the main requirements to apply for programs here in Sweden is that you have a sufficient proficiency in English. And this can be done by submitting an internationally recognized test, English test, such as IELTS or TOEFL. Um, generally, you'll have to meet a level of 
uh, English, which is called English 6 here. Um, but on the university admissions website, there is really good information about how to meet this level with an IELTS or TOEFL test. There are a few other tests here as well, there as well that are accepted, but these are the two main ones that most people use. Yeah, I mean, I would say so. No, basically, no international students coming to Sweden, uh, no Swedish before coming here, and this is probably the main reason why it's um, why people struggle to learn Swedish is because you don't need to know Swedish to survive here. Daniel, you mentioned this briefly, but do you just want to talk about your experiences about kind of navigating, I guess, both you know, student life, but also life outside the classroom, just not knowing any or knowing limited Swedish, I guess, when you came here. <laughs> yes, uh, that's why I was saying that this is kind of related to the previous one because this makes English even more important <laughs> because Swedish is not uh, required in any way. It's only English. So I can tell you that in the student life, it's really, really important. And I cannot stress this enough because even for students, I, I have classmates who whose uh, English is they even know that it could improve a little bit. And uh, what happens is that you have to write a master thesis. In my program, we have to write two master thesis. So uh, writing uh, an academic text that it's like 60 pages long in English, that's really gonna test your skills, even if you're fluent in English. So um, that's just to, let you know that how important it is. So moving away from the academic life, I can tell you that it's also important because it's a common language between all of the international students. So you might need someone who speaks your language if it's um, uh, quite a common language. Like uh, I know that there's a lot of people from, from China and they usually prefer to, to speak in their native language. But even so, uh, it makes it hard to socialize because that's something that, that I've, I've learned from the Swedish culture. And it's, it's just like this, that whenever I enter a room and everyone's switching from Swedish to English, I try to reciprocate and I never speak in, in Spanish, even if I'm talking to a Spanish speaker, if there's someone around who doesn't speak Spanish, even if they're not, not part of the conversation because it makes them feel excluded, it's good I don't know, and, and experiencing that myself, like being in, in a place where no one is, is speaking my language and I feel that I cannot just jump into the conversation or participate. So um, it's gonna make it hard even for your social life. So even if you meet someone that speaks your language, stick to English, it's really important. And like I told you, just being around everywhere, uh, going to a grocery store, going, going to any type of, place uh, where you need to talk to someone in a counter or, or someone attending, well, they will speak to you in English. So they are prepared to respond to English. So uh, it makes it really, really, really important. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, a perfect answer, I think. Um, and it kind of goes into the next question as well, I feel like, which is about um, a student who is asking if they can work while studying. Um, and yes, you can. So when you come to Sweden, you get a residence permit for studies, but you're allowed to work with that permit. Um, so you can work while you're studying. Um, Daniel, you're working. Um, you have multiple jobs, actually. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, you certainly can. Um, but I mean, you, the first thing to know is that your master's program, or I guess bachelor's, is it's basically like a full-time job. And it's not, I wouldn't say it's easy to find a job. You can find jobs here. But it's not easy. Um, one of the benefits, I think, is you don't always need to know Swedish, but it certainly helps, I think, um, to work. Uh, of course, if you have like more of a more experience, it's, it's going to be easier to get a job here speaking English. But Daniel, do you just want to kind of just briefly sh like share thoughts on, uh, or I guess, what you're doing for work right now? Absolutely. I'll talk about two things: uh, working while being a student and afterwards, because I think that it's a big difference. So first, working as a student, uh, well, I'm currently working with IBM. Uh, it's just a research uh, intern position that I'm helping them with, with research in different topics. But um, that, there's one thing, there's no limit like in different, like in other countries that they tell you, like you, you can only work this many hours. There's no limit, you set the limit. 
And I can tell you that at least my program is so intense that it's really, really hard sometimes just even to manage uh, to work two hours a, a day on something else that it's not my master's program because it's very, very intense. But I know people who work with uh, cleaning and with just helping in stores or things like that. And what I can tell you is that if you're looking for a part-time job, that's something that it's kind of, well, it, it's something that you can get. I, I'm not gonna say it's super easy because there, then you go and you don't get one super easily, so I'm, I'm not gonna fall for that. But I can tell you that a lot of my classmates uh, have taken a part-time jobs and they, when you set out the, to find one, you find it. And usually they don't require um, any Swedish at all. Just speaking English is good enough. So it's, well, it's something that you can get. Let's call it easy to get. And you don't need to speak Swedish when you're a student. But if you're looking for a full-time job, that's a whole different story. Like I also know some people who are graduating and they are looking into possibilities uh, for jobs. And for that scenario, a full-time job in Sweden after you finish your studies, you need to be fluent in Swedish. It's just how it is even if the company works in english they just need you to speak swedish because you need to communicate to everyone in the company equally so um also it makes it hard to to live in in an office like i've experienced that just having lunch and everyone around you is speaking swedish <laughs> just uh there are different things that you need to think it's not just getting the job it's just living here as a student is different than living here working. So I hope that shines some light on both scenarios, but yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, and I would also argue that um, you, you definitely need to know some Swedish, but um, for all jobs, you probably don't need to be fluent afterwards because I mean, on the, on the flip side, I guess, I also know people that <laughs> have, have worked here for a long time and don't know much Swedish yet. So, um, yeah, but I think you should really try to learn some Swedish for sure yeah. if you're interested in staying here and, and working, definitely. That's key. And I think both, since both <clears throat> Jog and I, we're American and British originally. And I think for me, certainly, it's been such an important thing to learn the language to um, fully understand it as well. Um, so definitely having Swedish has helped um, quite a lot just yeah, in sure. my day-to-day -day life. Yeah. Great. Um, can great. I can yes. I ask one more question? Yeah. Um, we talked a lot about winters, so someone has asked, "What are the summers like in Sweden?" Yeah. yeah. So I mean, we talked about the darkness during the winters. That means it's kind of the opposite, or it is the opposite during the summers, and the summers are super bright and warm usually. Um, Daniel, you were here last uh, summer for for quite a while. What did you think of the summer? Okay, I'm just gonna say this. Summers in Sweden are amazing. They are, they are, <laughs> yeah. Well, one of them is that, uh, okay, so I traveled out of Sweden for like a week. I went to uh, Italy. I'm just gonna tell you that it was like 40 degrees. I just, it was boiling hot. I couldn't st stand being on, on on the street on the sun, under the sun for, for a long time. But summer in, in, in Sweden, it's amazing because it's just, it's just right. It's uh, like in Malmo and in, I mean, I went to Stockholm as well. And it was like uh, between, let's say between 23 and 28 degrees. Uh, and it was great. And there's so much light. It's like the total opposite uh, uh, of the winter because we had like three hours of night. <laughs> Like if you go even further uh -huh. north is like the sun never sets. Mm -hmm. you, you get like uh, what's called a midnight sun. So it's something amazing. So uh, I, I can tell you that I loved it. And it's such a, a contrast just here spending so much time in the winter, just being covered, being inside. And you can, when you can go out without just, just a t-shirt and shorts, and enjoy Sweden and enjoy the nature. So, I don't know, I loved it. <laughs> the, yeah, the summers are incredible here. Like the, the people, 
the entire country changes and it's just yeah it's amazing the summers are so nice and i can't wait for the summer um so we uh, officially have one more minute left um so what we're gonna do now we have some more questions we haven't got through yet we're gonna address a few of these um kind of just briefly i guess we've had a few questions about specific requirements um for programs like architecture for example what we can say is what you guys have to do is research the specific program you're interested in because these requirements can vary depending upon the program even if you're interested in architecture it can vary depending upon the the university or the program you're at so that's going to vary so definitely check the website <coughs> they have very easy to understand information about what uh, what the requirements are so definitely check the website and that also applies to English language requirements yes. um, generally the requirements tend to be pretty similar but you guys will need to check the requirements based on the program you want to find out about those English language requirements which is super important um, to take those tests another question um, and these are kind of connected uh, someone asking for the best universities in the field of sustainability um, and uh, the other question is how to be uh, Greta Thunberg, um, the Swedish uh, activist, the schoolgirl who's created kind of a global, global movement um, related to combating climate change. So Sweden is, if you don't know, Greta Thunberg is from Sweden. She's um, uh, a student here. Um, and she's created a, a movement um, around climate combating climate change. Sweden is really known for sustainability and having a focus on the climate. We're not gonna give you, there's a lot of great programs related to sustainability. I would even argue that programs that you don't think to have a sustainability focus probably have some element of sustainability in them, whether you're studying business or something else. It's just part of the mindset. Um, so there is no best university to, to study sustainability in Sweden. Sweden in general is a fantastic place to study anything related to environment, environmental studies, sustainability, etc. Um, yeah, well, anything to add for that? No, no, I think we covered everything. Okay. But I feel, I think. So, yeah. Um, and then um, <clears throat> uh, we have a question about accommodation, and um, that is really going to vary. Uh, depending upon where you're studying, what university you're studying at. And you, I would really recommend those of you who are wondering about accommodation to go to our student blog uh, and to search for blog posts about that um, because our ambassadors can have tips for you guys um, as well, I think. And then the last question is, what are some bad things about Sweden? Um, we've talked about the darkness and kind of the rain and the cold. Um, uh, any any other things you want to this is a it sucks to end on this note <laughs> the final question before you wrap up uh daniel do you have anything um that you aren't as thrilled with i guess that you haven't talked about yet uh yeah i just wanted to to let you know about the housing that for me it's one of the most important things so whoever is asking the, fir the first thing i would do if i decided that i want to go to sweden i would go to the website uh of the region where I'm planning to go and look up what's the, the queue system for, for getting accommodations. Because th that's the one thing I wish I would have done differently <laughs> because you need to go into a queue and the soonest you go, the better because each day it's picture that you're getting like points. So if you've been in the system for 10 days, you have 10 points. So the longer you have been in, in the system, it, the easier it is to find accommodation. So just look up the region, like uh, the city, or if you just in Google, you can do that. And there are going to be several websites for looking accommodation. So just signing up in them, just to be there in the queue, it's important. I I, I know what you guys would say. Yeah, that's super good advice. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. Um, I, I think for, yeah, we, we have to go. I have to get back to my kids um, and uh, we have to wrap up. We've gone over by a few, a few minutes. Um, so no problem. No problem. It's been a pleasure listening to your webinar. It's been great. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah. We've loved it. Daniel, uh, 
so nice listening to you. It's okay. such a nice, like, personal story you you said, Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> Well, That's great. I mean, I just want to thank the panelists, of course, for your time um, and for all of the information that you've given today. Um, thank you for the attendees for actually asking some pretty great questions, I think. Um, yeah, thanks, guys. We them, right? We, we covered them. Um, if there are any more, please let us know. Um, you can always email us or, of course, study Sweden, and we will get them back to you as soon as possible. Um, and I just want to remind you guys to visit Viva-Mondo as well, you know, if you do want to see other options and uh, kind of, you know, research what you should do. Um, so, yeah, I just want to say thank you guys. And also, I totally understand the darkness in the UK is something else. So, <laughs> totally good. Right. Okay. Well, I'll end on that note. So, thank you all for coming. Yeah. Thank thanks, everyone. So thank you. Bye-bye.